as I said in the last video, we now know how to code. We've covered all of the basis of code, and so now we're just looking at applications or some of those subtle newer things that we need to do now that we know how to code you know we need to apply sort of our ability and that's actually where just to sort of demonstrate that we'll talk about something like principal component analysis which is a statistical model uh, and we're going to run through it to get the values that we're looking for so what is principal component analysis Big fancy $5 word, oh well, you know, it's meant to calculate the optimal hyperplanes uh, when we're dealing with a large data set. I know that that is also a very, that's, that's not even a $5 word, that's a $10 word. But the entire idea, just to work off of, say for example, this, uh, this research paper. Uh, so the entire idea is using something like principal component analysis based on or to look at food patterns to identify uh, obesity in Nepali Nepalese uh, adults. Okay, again, the entire idea here is we happen to have a number of variables. We can look at them. You can see uh, we've got different food groups going on here. And if I wanted to then look at this data and say, well, what are the, you know, eating habits of uh, Nepalese adults, right? That's a, that's a very big uh, loaded question. How do I do that? Well, principal component analysis is a way to look at these variables. And if we happen to ha have uh, all of the different food patterns from all of the different uh, people in this population, we can do something like principal component analysis. Again, I know that's a big fancy word here to identify patterns uh, based on some x, y coordinate. And optimal hyperplanes, you know, now we're dealing with, in this case, we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23 possible dimensions instead of it just being 1, x, and y, 23, right? That's what optimal hyperplane is referring to. Ugh. But, you know, we can break this down and you can see that they uh, have very common patterns and uh, common patterns can be observed, like the mixed pattern where they're just eating just a mix of healthy foods, the not healthy pattern where they're just doing fast food and sweets, and then just, uh, you know, meat, proteins, uh, and alcohol, uh, and then finally solid fats and dairies. The big idea is more this idea that they are able to identify these patterns by utilizing this model. Let's boil it down even smaller. Let's just say we were dealing with uh, a one-dimensional plane. I have a vector of just 100 values. Well, looking at them, is there a way uh, that they could be divided uh, such that I am properly separating them out. Oh, well, yeah, you know, obviously we can see. I built this uh, graphic specifically for that reason. I could split it down the middle somewhere here. And yes, this shows me sort of the, the very easiest uh, way to divide and show variance of these two values. Ta-da. But what happens when I start getting into larger values? Well, in this case, you can see it's slightly, you know, tilted. It's not a perfect just circle. But realistically, you could say, oh, well, you know, <clears throat> let me uh, make my color a little uh, darker so it stands out. I could work off of sort of this angle and it won't be perfect because, I, I, you know, I'm drawing. But I can work off of this angle, and we can see that this sort of angle uh, is going to have a large, you can see it covers a large amount of the data uh, and the variance going on there. You know, So if we were to sort of just square this out, try and turn it into almost like it's a shape, right? Oh, well, you know, that covers a large amount of that uh, data. I won't call that sort of an X or a Y. The point, there we are. Uh, the point is more that, you know, this angle 
covers a very large amount of our data. And then, as you can already guess from sort of what I was drawing out, this angle sort of covers the second variance of our X and Y sort of uh, platform. Now, visually, yes, that, that was able to be uh, taken care of quite easily. But when we're, again, dealing with... Um, What's the word? When we're dealing with 23 variables, you know, again, uh, you can't find optimal hyperplanes like this uh, in 23 dimensions, or you can't do it visually. And if you can, you're not watching this video. You're you're a genius or beyond human comprehension. I, anyway, my point is, well based off of this idea of these uh, lines, that's actually where we could start to represent something known as eigenvectors and these axes, these angles. We can see that because this angle is gonna have the largest amount of variance, right? This covers and shows the, amount of, the largest amount of variance of our values. We would classify this angle, this eigenvector, as our first principal component uh, and then the same kind of thing since we're dealing with two dimensions in sort of this 2d world I would need to then look at the next dimension in this case uh, two if we were dealing with the uh, eating habits there are 23 variables there are 23 dimensions uh, or principal components not all of them are going to give you the highest value but they exist either way to start with principal component, you have to do covariance, right? You have to calculate out covariances because what you're trying to do is see uh, which variables have positive correlations or positive covariances uh, or negative covariances or no covariances, right? You're looking for these variables and, you know, if you were dealing with this, at some point, you would be shown this mathematical formula, and that's the it. That's the only thing you would, you have to now implement that. <clears throat> yep. So what does that mean? Well, okay, if we broke it down, we're talking about, well, given some array or list of numbers, each number in there is represented by its respective locations. Uh, we also are going to need to get the means, and then we need to know how many data objects we're dealing with. Now, I'm not going to work off of sort of this amount of numbers because that's too many, or uh, this because, again, it's very complex, but working off of just a very simple x, y plot, here it is. You already can visualize that, you know, this is sort of going to be our... Uh, our principal component uh, optimal hyperplanes or axes uh, going on there. Here's our largest and here's our sort of smallest and slimmest. It can go a little further, uh, but effectively you can see that. All right, good. Same kind of concept would come into play here. We would need to go out and calculate out the variance uh, means and you know here's my n. And then I would need to start going through those calculations as necessary. Now, in a nutshell, you know, again, the slides can do that. Or we happen to have the ability of, once again, applying this thing called Python to these calculations. So, again, I've just taken those values and converted them into NumPy arrays. I do have the approximation uh, Unicode symbol here. Um, that's just mostly for visualization perspective. But you can see that NumPy happens to already have the dot mean or have uh, the way to calculate average mean or for you because it's such a common uh, statistical model. Okay, well, it's already built it, so you don't have to do that for you. It would also allow you to do median or mode or other types of statistical models. But either way, you can see, oh, well, now I have roughly 1392, 42. We double check. Yes, that does, in fact, uh, uh, you know, equal what my slides say. I would hope so because I... I I, I ran them together and I filled them out. Anyways, my point is, congratulations. Okay, I've got the means. Same kind of concept. I need to get that X prime where 
x each individual x is subtracted by the mean well remember that this is numpy and so numpy says i'm just going to go element by element in x and subtract it by this scalar value and so guess what it automatically does it all for us oh that's so beautiful isn't it it's so great wonderful magical fine tip magical fantastic i don't know where that accent went uh same thing with my y and then as you can imagine i can do the exact same thing off of these calculated uh x and y primes i've just called them prime just as a term um but guess what i got the calculations and yeah doing a comparison off of those you can see we would get them 115 and then a negative 6.9 they're in scientific notation, but oh, there's that same value. And then we're almost done. We got to take that. We got to sum it together, and then we got to divide it. We got to take it. We got to sum it together, and then we got to divide it. And congratulations, that's how you calculate out a covariance between two arrays. But that's not principal component analysis at all. You know, what's... You know, that just told me the covariance. And in fact, that is uh, correct. <clears throat> when we're dealing with a large data set, you know, again, I just found one covariance out of all of them. Uh, and if I happen to have 23, like the eating habits of Nepalese people, that's a lot uh, to process. Again, we're only dealing with an X and Y because it's easy. Uh, but you can imagine you'd have to do this over and over and over again. Well, luckily, as you can imagine, guess what? There happens to be a way to do covariance matrices with NumPy, np.cov. Ta-da! There it is. And if you happen to notice, it's not just that 2.94, which is what we were getting, but it's also going to produce the covariance matrix for uh, x next to... Uh, x compared to x because i need to maybe do that and then y compared to y because again if we're thinking about principal components we're looking for where those values have correlations or covariance positive covariance uh, so in that case it can work if you're feeling froggy guess what you can do a third covariance as well in this case you do need to make it a list that's more of a numpy thing um, but it will do it for you. And so you can see, uh, here's my covariance off of just x, y. Here's my covariance off of x, y, and this magical random z uh, that I've produced. Now, I've already, I'm slowly cheating on it as well, uh, but as you can see here, we can, in a nutshell, very quickly with one step, do this. It's fantastic, beautiful. And, well, okay, to do the next step, which is taking those covariance uh, matrix of all those different values, and guess what? We got to build an identity matrix, and we got to uh, find some lambdas and find a determinant, and here's a great YouTube video that'll do that for you. Or, no, we can just use NumPy. Uh, NumPy.linalg, the linear algorithm or linear algebra. Uh, sub library inside of numpy happens to have its own function eig which will magically produce the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for your principal component and so here we go you can let me <clears throat> jump down here i'm using the 2d so just x and y and so you can see we're going to get a few different calculations uh the first one again eigenvalues eigenvalues is representing how important a particular eigenvalues are representing how important a particular uh, what's a principal component is. I was looking for those words. So in a nutshell, you see 6.18 and then 411. It's again representing how important a particular angle, remember if we're dealing with these in angles, uh, a particular principal component is so 411 again if we're looking comparing to all of our other eigenvalues that would mean that this 
principal component, this vector, this angle, is our most important, our first principal component. And here is the angle, the vector, the eigenvector of that value. Uh, again, in a nutshell, once, just like we saw when we were drawing it out, right? It's this. We we have identified that this is in fact our uh, first primary component. And so again, just here's some more kind of details going on there. You can see that I can break that out even further, uh, where I, I grab the max, it's just gonna produce the max value, uh, and where that index is, and in particular, uh, where what that eigenvector is. Again, if we do some jumping back and forth, those values are very similar to what we're, those values are what we're seeing going on here. In this case of principal component for the, the Nepalese uh, diet habits, again, you're seeing those values. You can see where uh, it, there were important values going on here, and they kind of bold things out that are just larger. Uh, our values are a little different because they're not, the, we're not dealing with just, you know, we're dealing with random data on, a, on an X, Y plane, but you can see, oh, well, this sort of, the y value will have a higher change uh, than the x value. And yes, I know that it doesn't look terribly like that, but again, that's where, as you can see, y goes from, uh, in this case, 30 to 90, so there's a 60-digit range here, versus 0 to 25, which is not as uh, pronounced. So again, y is going to be a heavy component here. Um, going on. But as you can see, again, we can sort of produce them. This is a terrible drawing of sort of those. Uh, there are methods for drawing arrows onto these graphics, but that is actually something we'll talk about a little later.